Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us here today. I'm Micah. This is Sarah. We're the lead pastors at the Vine Church here in Pasco, Washington. Thanks for being with us today. It is so good to be together. You know, this week I was reflecting back on some of my experiences in Guinea, West Africa. I grew up in Africa because my parents are missionaries there. And I was thinking back to a time um, when I was really young, maybe seven or eight, and I needed a surgery, a minor surgery. I needed my appendix removed. And I remember, you know, some of the details, but a lot of it is fuzzy. But one memory really stands out through that experience for me. I remember laying in bed as I was recovering and a friend coming to visit. And it was this missionary lady who had just this big smile on her face. She was so excited to see me, so loving, so caring. She brought me a game and we sat down and we played games together. And as I was thinking about that, this memory, a memory, a lot of the details fuzzy, but but what's really strong is that feeling of being cared for and being loved on. And I was reminded of Maya Angelou's quote um, that she said, she said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Okay, so today as we continue a series about the way of Jesus, uh, we are looking at the way his teachings align with the life he's living, with his actions. And today we're going to look at mercy and compassion, some of what you experienced yeah. in that moment, both the way Jesus taught about it and the way he demonstrated it. And so we're going to start off in Matthew 5, and this is the Sermon on the Mount. This is where we started off last week, too. And, and at the beginning of this sermon, Jesus has several statements that are called the Beatitudes, and they each start with blessed are. And, and this word blessed means fortunate are you when, or congratulations to you because of this. And so in Matthew 5, verse 7, here's one of Jesus's Beatitudes. He said, blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. What does this word mercy mean? What does it mean to be merciful? And that means to, to show love, to show kindness. Um, sometimes it's even translated as loving kindness, to show care and concern or grace and favor, to give to others when others are in need. Okay. Further, Jesus goes on and he says in Luke chapter 6, verse 36, be merciful just as your heavenly Father mm. is merciful. So again, uh, mimicking the actions of our heavenly Father or of Jesus. And this is an interesting statement to me because when I think of mercy, often I think of the big, broad salvation type yes. of mercy and grace that has been shown to me. And that is very true. We know this. Uh, but I was reminded this week as I was processing these verses of the everyday mercies mm -hmm. and compassion that God is showing. And, and I was reflecting on this unbelievable season, the last year and a half of pandemic, uh, all that's going on both in our church life, our, our, our community, our nation, the world, all this happening and the amount of anxiety and, and struggle there's been for me and probably for a lot of us in this journey. And I, I, I'm reminded this week of the the frequent experience of sitting, just doing breath prayers, talking with God, inviting the Spirit to bring peace and calm and the mercy and compassion mm. that God demonstrates in those moments when we take to Him the things happening in our lives, the stress or the struggles that we might have. So Jesus says, just as God is being merciful and compassionate in your life, uh, you too uh, live that way, be that way in the lives of others. And often in scripture, this idea of mercy and compassion mm -hmm. go hand in hand. They're intertwined. They're, they're linked very closely. And it's all over the Old Testament. One specific example is in Psalm 51, verse 1, where, where David, it's, it's a prayer of confession um, uh, from David. And he says to, to God, he cries out to God and he says, God, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. And I love how you see mercy and compassion mm -hmm. so closely linked here. 
David is saying, have mercy on me because of your great compassion, because of your great love for me. I can come to you and plead for mercy. And often compassion and love is the driving force behind acts of mercy. Mm. So we explore today uh, both the teaching of Jesus and his action. The way of Jesus, that is the confluence of his teaching and the ways he lived life. In Matthew chapter 20, there's a beautiful story of his compassion and mercy. Starting in verse 29, as Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the more, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately they received their sight and followed him. Mm. So the recipients of the compassion, the mercy of Jesus in this moment is two blind beggars. Mm -hmm. Now in Israelite culture in this time, uh, neither of those were high marks, blind or a beggar. They did not have status in society. They weren't respected or appreciated, often seen as a nuisance, as I think is illustrated in this story, as people start to rebuke them. You know, it's, it's fascinating to picture the scene and Jesus walking in these two blind beggars calling out and, and starting to capture the attention of Jesus mm -hmm. and people around. And people are like, no, this isn't what we want to be seeing or engaging. Sometimes we have similar reactions to people, maybe homeless people or people begging on our streets. They're like, no, we don't want that mm -hmm. to be the focus. We look the other way. Or in this case, they rebuke them and say, be quiet. We, we're here to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. We want to see what Jesus has to say and do. And so they try to push aside these men, what's fascinating is what Jesus does want to do, what he does want to say and engage in in this moment. And so these men, as they, as they hear that Jesus is coming by, they begin to shout, Lord, Son of David, Son of David. What does this statement mean? It's a messianic title, a title referring to the Messiah, the long-awaited king from the line of King David that would reign forever. And Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise to David that there would be a king from, from his descendants who would reign forever, not an earthly king as many people, including the disciples, expected at this point, but rather a just and righteous, uh, a merciful and compassionate king over a new kind of kingdom with a new way of living and a new way of operating. And so it's very significant that the blind beggars sitting on the side of the road are shouting out, son of David, son of David, have mercy on me. I wonder what they've heard about Jesus at, at this point. It doesn't tell us, but they've clearly heard of Jesus and, and who he is, this unconventional rabbi teaching about mercy and love and performing miraculous healings. I can imagine some of their conversations like asking, is this, is this the Messiah? Is this the one? And then in that moment realizing, oh, Jesus is about to walk by and Jesus is within hearing range. And, and I can imagine the rising feeling of hope and excitement as they shout out Regardless of what the crowd is saying, they shout out to get his attention and say, Jesus, son of David. And their request, have mercy on me, have mercy on us. You know, and Jesus demonstrates his mercy and compassion in two ways. The first, a little more subtle, uh, maybe easier to miss. The very fact that Jesus stops and turns his attention mm -hmm. and engages in conversation while others want to rebuke or push aside these people, the very fact that Jesus mm -hmm. engages in this moment in the lives of these people in their request, 
this is the first sign of mercy, of compassion that he's demonstrating. It would have been a big statement to the people watching, especially those who just told them to be quiet, like mm -hmm. a big statement from Jesus. And then Jesus, as he turns to them and engages them, he asks them a question. He, he asks, what do you want me to do for you? And I love this question. You know, at first glance, it might seem obvious. Well, duh, clearly <laughs> they want to see. But I find it so beautiful that Jesus takes the time to pause and to ask them this question. It requires them or it's an invitation for them to reflect on where they're at, their need, and to reflect on their desire for that need to be met by Jesus. And so they respond to him and they say, we want to see. We want our sight. And Jesus demonstrates mercy here. He demonstrated mercy when he engages them. And he demonstrates mercy here when he touches their eyes and he heals them. Yeah. Years ago, as we were starting this church planting journey, we had new worship leaders coming in and just a, a, an interesting mix of people, right? Coming together, different talents, different backgrounds and life experiences. And I was first introduced in that season to a song written about this story. Um, it's by Ghost Ship, and it's a song called Son of David. Mm -hmm. And it tells the story of these men in a remarkable way. And so we want to take just a minute to walk through the lyrics of that. And we'd, I, I'd highly encourage you, take the time to listen to that, that this week and allow uh, that music just to pour over you. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. Um, and the song begins like this. It says, the blind won't gain their sight by opening their eyes. Mm -hmm. It's saying there's a problem deeper than something that these men or we could solve in and of ourselves. They can't simply open their eyes to see. It says a king is coming to the city and crowds around, they're following. They say, if I could see, then I would follow too. Two men sitting there unable to get up and follow like the crowds are. They're left mm -hmm. out of the occasion. He heals the sick with his hands as he walks by. They reach for him. If I could see, then I would reach out too. Again, the desperation, yeah. the inability to engage. Help is so near. And yet here they find themselves stuck without the ability to. And then verse 2 continues. I cannot leave this gate since I cannot see my way, but I can stand and call his name. No, I cannot I can I could never leave this gate, but I will stand and shout his name and I will count on his grace. So you hear again the desperation but also the hope here. Oh, but I can stand and shout his name, I can stand up and I can count on his mercy and his grace. And then the chorus, son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, I want to see. Son of David, have mercy on me. You hear the desperation, you hear the hope as they realize who's approaching. And then the, the title, the realization that this is the son of David, the Messiah, the anointed one the king full of mercy and love and grace. And then the little interlude in the song that for me is this emotional moment every time I hear the song as the, the story begins to shift. It says, I was blind, now I mm -hmm. see, Jesus saved me. And then it, you come back to this chorus, Son of David, have mercy. But my perspective has begun to shift yeah. from two blind men 2,000 years ago to the very real state of my life. I was blind and I, there's nothing I can do in and of myself to, to save myself, to bring myself up out of the place that I was, to find eternal hope in Jesus. There's nothing I could do. And so I cry out to Jesus, have mercy on me. And he has given us sight and he has saved us. This is the story of Matthew chapter 20, it is the teaching of Jesus. He is merciful mm. and he is compassionate. And as we explore application today, what does this mean for us? As Jesus reminded us or, or challenged us in, in Luke 6, he says, you've been shown mercy, so demonstrate it yourself. Live lives of mercy and compassion in the people you interact with, in the relationships 
you have. Choose the way of Jesus that is mercy and compassion. And can you imagine what our, how our lives would be different, how our community would be different if we did just that, lived lives of mercy like Jesus? Love the way of Jesus. Let's pray about that. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for your mercy and your compassion and your love. Jesus, we thank you for how you have been merciful to us. And Lord, through these stories and through our interactions, Lord, we, we see your mercy. And we, we ask you to teach us to live in these ways. Lord, right now we pray for the people in our community who need mercy and compassion. And Lord, we all do. But there are people in our community right now who are being pushed to the side, who aren't being seen. And so, Lord, we lift them up to you now. And we also surrender ourselves as individuals and as a community to you that you might continue to lead us and teach us what it looks like to be a community of mercy and grace and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, friends, thank you for joining us this morning. It's good to be together in this respect, and uh, we are so grateful um, for what God has done in our lives. A God of mercy and compassion invites us to go ahead in this week and to live in that way. Thanks for joining us, friends. Have a blessed week.